Here it is, my friends, the video that is going to explain to you everything you need to know about the magical secret ingredient in natural farming, and that is the leaf mold. So first I'm going to say a few things about it, and then I'm going to take you into the forest and show you exactly what to look for and how to find the most effective of the microorganisms. And then at the end of the video, I will show you two techniques that you can utilize if you don't have access to a nice forest, because I know a lot of you are in the desert and you've already asked me, Nate, we don't have forests like that. How can I still harness the power of these indigenous microorganisms? Well, I will tell you. So first, we must understand the purpose of the leaf mold. Why are we utilizing the leaf mold? To understand this, we must look to nature. And we will see that even though nobody fertilizes nature, nobody adds any inputs to the soil or does anything, year after year, the soil becomes still more fertile. The, the forest becomes more giving of life. Think about a thousand year old forest. It is still bursting with life and fresh and young and giving of new life. Now, how does it do this? How does nature maintain the self-sustaining cycle? This is how. The roots of the plants go deep into the earth and they mine the minerals that the plant needs. It then stores the minerals in the plant tissue. Then at the end of the year, everything falls to the ground and it is decomposed by the microorganisms and the minerals and nutrients that were locked up in the plant tissue become disintegrated and decomposed and turned back into plant available minerals. That is how year after year, the forest, the land becomes more fertile than it was before. And this is in a huge part because of the microorganism activity. Now, why must we utilize microorganisms that are from our specific area? We call these indigenous microorganisms because adaptation happens in nature. So the microorganisms that are around your area, if you go to the oldest forest that you know of in your area and find the biggest oldest tree in your area, as you'll see in a moment, at the base of that is going to be the microorganisms that are well adapted to your specific locality. So it would not make any sense for me to try to acquire microorganisms from the Amazon rainforest. They would not thrive in a northern Indiana winter where it freezes solid for two months straight. Likewise, the bottles of EM1 or whatever it is, these are cultured microorganisms from a laboratory or a factory setting. This is not going to be optimized for our specific environment. So that is why we must use the local resources so that we can then take those and culture them and add them back into the land because the forest is bursting with life, but depleted farmland, as you can go to the countryside in Indiana and see this, this farmland soil has been depleted of its life. The microorganism activity is almost dead. And so without the use of chemical fertilizers, the, the farm soil is not going to yield anything. That's why you must use fertilizers and pesticides in the industrial ag type farming. But in the nature, you don't have to use any of that because of this natural cycle. So let us harness the power of these indigenous microorganisms. So let me take you into the forest and show you exactly what to look for. Okay, first step is to go to the oldest forest you know of and go to some of the biggest oldest trees in that forest and go to the base of them. And you will see when you clear away some of the brush that there are white thread-like material running throughout and this is the mycelium of the fungi of the fungus and you see here it is completely covering this wood and that is what we want because that is the type of microorganisms that is going to quickly and efficiently decompose this plant material and turn it back into plant available minerals you see it's all over the place here at the base of this old tree so i want to take some of this it's covered in the white fabric or in the white threads you see that's covering this piece of, of wood because it is digesting it. Now, we want to take a few handfuls of the white mycelium material, a few handfuls of the what appears to be uh, soil, and then we just want to cover that spot back up. We don't even want to make it noticeable. And then we move on to another spot. You see here, this animal skull has already begun to return to the earth and become 
plant available once again. Everything comes from the soil, and to the soil it will return. Then we're going to go a few hundred yards away, and we're going to find this dead tree that has begun to decompose. And so we're going to go to the base of this tree, and we're going to scoop away the debris so that we can gather some of what appears to be soil. But this is actually what we're calling leaf mold, top-notch leaf mold. So when you give it a good squeeze, it'll form a small ball, but as soon as you press on it, it all crumbles apart again. This is top-notch leaf mold material. This is going to have all of the indigenous microorganisms that we need to inoculate our brews with all of the good stuff. So walk around the forest and get a feel and sample from many different parts. Guys, let me know if you want to see a way, the way that I turn these turkey tail mushrooms into straight up medicine. I could do a video on that if you like. And remember, it's most beneficial if we go to as many different spaces as we can find. We want to go all over the woods and go to numerous big old trees. And we want to utilize the plethora and bounty of microorganisms that exist. So as many different locations of samples as you can get is the best. And here we are after some lovely time spent in the woods. I picked up a few mushrooms so I could identify them later. But here we just have uh, many different samples of very high quality leaf mold and indigenous microorganisms. Now we're just going to store this in the basement with a burlap lid, a breathable lid. And we're going to keep it moist over the winter by just misting it every few weeks or so. Okay, so that is how you will seek out the highest quality leaf mold and thus the microorganisms in your area. Now, what to do if you don't have access to a forest like that, if you live in the desert? Well, let's go outside and I will show you. Okay, step one is to gather as much vegetative matter as you can. As many different kinds of wild grasses and different kinds of wild weeds and everything that you can, along with some woody carbon-based material. You'll put the carbon-based material on the ground and then you will stack the weeds and the grasses on top of that. And then you will keep it nice and wet, uh, either by spraying it or putting a tarp over it. And then after two to three weeks, you can move the brush back and you will see here that the mycelium has started to already digest the uh, carbon base, the wood chips. And this is how we are going to harvest the indigenous microorganisms in our area. Even if we live in the desert, you can do this. Just gather as many wild grasses from as many different places as you can and create a pile like this. And right where the pile touches the earth, that is where you're going to scoop the, the wood chips or the carbon debris. And that's going to be inoculated with the beneficial microorganisms. So that's how you do it in the desert. Okay, and as an absolute last resort, if you cannot get the leaf mold from the forest or the wild grasses like you just saw, then yes, you can utilize your compost pile. But compost is majorly bacterial dominant. And really what we want to colonize our soil is a, is a fungal dominance from the forest. So, but yes, this will still work because if you go to the bottom of your compost pile and you get a handful of this dark, rich, uh, luscious uh, soil that is bursting with life that is going to have the uh, digesters that are required to turn the stuff into plant available material this is the least desirous of the three methods but if it's your only option yes you can use this good quality finished compost okay so if you feel like you gained something from the video then give it a thumbs up also share the video with anyone that you think needs this knowledge go ahead and leave a comment whatever it is just the first thing that comes to mind it helps to grow the channel and a big shout out to everyone that is using the link in the description to make a donation to the paypal account that is very much appreciated my friends see you next time